Hey guys, Quiv, the Lazy Geek here, and today I want to do a little exciting video, to me at least, about how the focusing in Nina got even easier and even better. And this is all thanks to the creator of Nina, Isbjorn, who coded that enhancement that takes inspiration from other software's way of doing backlash compensation of the focuser, uh, like what SGP does. And uh, if you go, if you get the latest nightly, so nightly 81, 1.1081 of Nina, and you go under the uh, options and equipment, if you go under advanced settings for the focuser, you can see there is a new backlash compensation method with a great tool tip on top of it, which tells you like absolute versus um, overshoot. Absolute is the method we're using right now. This option is only available before you connect the focuser. There's a very good reason for that. Uh, you'll see if I go in the equipment and I connect the focuser and I go back to this options, it's grayed out. You are stuck once you're connected to the focuser. That's because they track the position of the focuser differently um, and they're not compatible with each other within a single uh, run of Nina. So it's uh, something to keep in mind. The absolute compensation, compensation method is just as usual as we've done before, which is that basically whenever your focuser reverses direction, so whenever the gears themselves reverse directions and so they lose contact, they float for a bit before regaining contact, um, you will basically you will apply an absolute uh, focuser like backlash compensation. For me, it's 93 steps here and it works great for me. This is great, this is perfect, but it means that you need to uh, calculate your backlash perfectly. And I've noticed that unfortunately for a lot of people, my backlash calculation tool, which is under uh, imaging and measure focuser, focuser backlash here does not work very well. And yeah, that's too bad. So I might actually retire this feature entirely because we have this new SGP-like way of doing things, which is overshoot. And overshoot is uh, basically it will determine uh, it will determine the final direction of the focuser, and it does a very simple logic, which is that, for example, for every movement in one direction, in the in direction it does not apply any backlash. But for any movement in the out direction, it will overshoot by an amount that's more than the actual backlash in the system, and then pull back by that same amount. And with the way that mechanically the backlash works, it assumes that backlash in and out are the same, which is the, the case for most focusers. It will properly compensate for backlash. The, only uh, the big advantage is that you do not need to know your backlash precisely. You can just uh, put any number that's more than your actual backlash. So I would recommend using like the method I highlighted in some of my previous videos to measure the backlash based on the flat part of the autofocus curve and then add 50% to that. So multiply by 1.5 or even two and put that as the, uh, as the backlash for the backlash compensation overshoot method. Now for this to work, you need to set the uh, backlash compensation in only one of the two. Otherwise it's gonna completely mess up everything. So for example, if I set my backlash in to 150, which is more than my actual, my actual backlash and zero in the other direction, it will actually, we can read the tooltip. So, um, Right, so for backlash in and out, only one of these two must be set. When setting in, the amount will be applied on each inward movement. So the final movement will always be out, which means that with my setting right now, whenever I, I make the focuser go in, it will go in by the number of steps that are required. It will then overshoot by 150 se steps, and then it will attempt to go back one by 150 steps. This means that my last movement is an outward movement, and it's always going to be the case. So with this, we don't need precise backlash compensation, it w just works. And you can also decide the final direction of movement 
in all cases, which means that uh, for uh, SCT owners, for, sh for, for uh, scopes that have a big mirror flop, in theory, you always want to finish your uh, focusing counterclockwise so that you're pushing against the mirror so that gravity makes uh, work. And um, with this new feature, it's possible. So one, you don't need to, to know your backlash precisely. You can just put any number that's over the actual backlash of your uh, focuser. And two, um, for SCTs, you will now decide which last direction the focuser will use. Um, the only drawback is that it makes us the assumption that backlash in and out are the same, which should be the case for most focusers. So this is this is great. I'm I'm so excited by that. I haven't tested it yet. This is better feature. It's all new, but this is so exciting. This is uh, yeah. This is great, and I kind of feel like I should have built that uh, backlash compensation like that in the first place. So kudos to uh, Isbear and the, the creator of Nina for uh, catching up my mess. Um, and that was a short one for today, just to give you an idea of this new feature. That is awesome. Um, it's uh, it's just great. So uh, I hope it's useful to you. I hope you will test it. I think this is absolutely awesome. And uh, I hope you share my my uh, enthusiasm. So if you enthusiasm, so if you like this video, click like, click subscribe because there's tons more content coming up about processing. I have some equipment reviews as well coming up. Uh, tons of good stuff. Uh, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss them. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.